Hello everyone, I'm uh, Wim Provost and I'm product manager for OpenV Storage. Um, I'd like to start with a, a question. Um, who here in the room thinks that uh, OpenStack Swift can be the backend for storing virtual machine data? Nobody? Okay, so great audience. Um, I'd like to start with basic, with some, some basic fundamentals about storage, and um, especially uh, <coughs> OpenStack and uh, the, the different projects within uh, storage. If you look at storage or the storage market or the storage um, uh, uh, the, the storage landscape, there's basically two types of storage. There's block storage and object storage. And block storage, well, you've got some big brand names there. You've got the, the EMC guys, NetApp, uh, there's some, some more. And they are um, creating expensive um, uh, storage, which is high performance, um, and it's low latency, and it's perfectly for virtual machines. It's got all kinds of uh, very cool um, uh, like management functionality, data management functionality, like tin cloning, zero copy snapshot, um, all that kind of things. But they're relatively small in capacity and not really very flexible um, if you want to scale them, uh, scale them up or scale them out. And on the other side, you have object storage. And object storage, well, you've got some names there, like OpenStack Swift, you've got uh, CleverSafe, you've got AmpliData, for example. And you typically will store their unstructured data or files even or backups or but it's mainly for um, for for non critical data non essential non non virtual machine data let's put it like that for backups or or like uh, repositories of files or or video movies um, and it's uh, relatively uh, slow it's um it's also typically very large or very scalable, so you can build like really petabyte clusters. Uh, it's inexpensive because you use uh, uh, inexpensive disks. It's uh, mainly software based. Um, it, you use JBots and you just run your software on top of them. Uh, it doesn't have like expensive controllers, uh, but you don't have any high um, high end data management features. The only thing you can do with an object store is do a put and a get. You can put something on it, you can get something of it, but like snapshot and, and, and all that kind of functionality, that's typically something you don't see um, within, uh, within object storage. And also OpenStack has these type, two types of storage. So we've got the Cinder project, which gives you the block storage, and you've got uh, Swift, which is giving you the, the object storage within uh, OpenStack. Okay, so a traditional OpenStack setup, how does it look? Well, first of all, you've got Nova. This is the, the component which is um, uh, doing the instance management, which will create the, the virtual machines. And then you've got Cinder, which is giving you the, the block storage. And uh, you've got Swift also, uh, typically, uh, to store, for example, backups. Now, if you want to make this working, you will have to have like a, a Sun or uh, a, 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 like something to store the data. Uh, for your Cinder volumes. Now, this is a little bit crazy because that means that you need to manage two storage platforms. So you've got Swift, which is a scalable object store, and you've got your Sun or your NAS or whatever kind of other solution you have to store your Cinder volumes. So that's kind of stupid, right? Why would you need to manage two types of storage? Now, there's a reason why you need to manage two types of storage because Swift on top of Cinder, uh, uh, Cinder, uh, Swift under Cinder or Cinder on top of Swift, let's put it like that. That's really not something that you can do out of the box. There's some reasons for that. Uh, one of the first reasons is eventual consistency. Uh, Swift is eventual consistent, which means that if you store something in Swift and you overwrite that something and later you ask it back, it could be that you get the first one back. So this is okay for video files, uh, but if you do this with, uh, with, uh, with virtual machine data, if you write a block, you overwrite that block, and you do a read and you get the old one, the first one back, that's not really going to work for applications. Like if you have a database, databases don't tend to like that kind of uh, thing. So eventual consistency is, um, is a, a big problem uh, for, um, for uh, virtual machines or for uh, hypervisors, for example. So one thing you could do is you could change your uh, hypervisor to, to be eventual consistency, uh, to, to deal with eventual consistency, but that's gonna be very hard. So if you have to change VMware or, or KVM to work uh, around eventual consistency, because that's basically what you need to do, you need to work around it as an application developer, that's, that's really not going to work. It's, it's way too hard to do this kind of thing. Second thing is Swift is uh, designed for, 
large amounts of mo uh, large amounts of sto uh, of storage, large amount of objects. So it's not really that performant. So it's got some latency, um, and it's yeah running typically on uh, on normal SATA drives, large capacity like eight terabyte drives. So. It's not ideal for virtual machines. So if you have your databases, they require really low latency, uh, fast storage, high performance storage. And that's typically not something that Swift will give you. Um, of course, um, there's a, a, a third thing. If you, if you have a, a Swift, it talks a get and a put. And um, that's, that's really objects that it speaks. And it's not speaking blocks. And you need block storage, which is completely different um, than what, what um, the object stores can, can understand. It's like cats and dogs. They don't get along. So there's a couple of reasons why you can't use Swift uh, under Cinder. Now, this is where we come in with OpenV storage. So we have that same slide as we, we used to have with the traditional setup. So what we now do is we are the link between Cinder and Swift. So data coming from Cinder goes into OpenV storage, and then we store it onto, uh, onto Swift. So that's kind of uh, what we do. And it also means that you only have one storage system to maintain instead of two. So how do we do that? Um, this is a, an OpenV storage architecture slide. So there's um, uh, underneath, um, uh, underneath your hypervisor, there's a, a virtual file system layer. So it looks like a file system, which is spread across all the hosts. And underneath that file system layer, there's a distributed volume layer. And that's typically what we do. We create distributed fast block storage. And then once uh, you, you get that distributed fast block storage, we go into a pool of disks. So this could be uh, any kind of object store, but uh, this could also be like a pool of, of normal SATA drives or SSDs. So that's kind of uh, what we deliver. And it's really scale out. So the more hosts you have, the bigger it grows um, uh, capacity wise, or you can also grow uh, the, the storage backends. So you can uh, grow in any kind of, of way. You could even grow performance by adding more SSDs, for example. So you can, it's really like a, a, a scale as you, as you grow uh, kind of uh, topology. And the thing we do is we have uh, not created one storage solution, but actually two storage solutions. So we have a tier one storage solution, which is location-based, which speaks uh, volumes. Um, and that's got a read and write cache on, on SSDs, on PCI flash to give you the performance. Um, it uh, also does thin provisioning. Um, it's VM-centric. It's got a distributed transaction log that I will cover later on. Um, and underneath that, on the back end, on the disks, on the, on the object storage, we use a log-structured approach. A log-structured approach means that it's, it's a time-based approach. So we aggregate every write of a volume into an, uh, an object, and then we store that as a, as a log onto our object store, S3, or a pool of disks, which means that you can do things like zero copy snapshots, thin cloning, uh, continue, you have continuous data protection, so you need, don't need to take backups. Um, and of course, since uh, it's objects, you can use an object store, so it's really scale out. Oh. So how did we solve eventual consistency for uh, Swift? Um, so what we do is we have here uh, the, the path of a, or the, the data coming in from a virtual machine. So we write all the LBAs, so LBA1, LBA2, LBA3 with 4K blocks. And we overwrite even um, uh, some LBAs. So LBA1 has been overwritten with uh, the 4K block number six. But um, instead of overwriting in place, we just append it to a file. And that file is something we call a storage container object. So instead of doing overrides, if you override an LBA, we just append it. We always append till we've got a nice chunk of data. So typically, we use uh, between 4 megabytes or 128 megabytes. And basically, it turns any random I.O. into sequential I.O. And sequential I.O. is perfect for object stores. They're, it's a nightmare. If you do random I.O. on an object store, it's, it's a nightmare. But if you do sequential I.O. on an object store, that's perfect. That's what they're made for. They're made for storing large files, like video files and, and things like that. So um, what we do is, is we store a write buffer on the SSDs or PCI flash or even in RAM, and then we flush it down to the back end. That's, that's where the object store or Swift is actually living. So uh, a little more about the architecture. So we have the 4K blocks coming in. This go into a, a write buffer. This um, even um, uh, eliminates the VM blender effect. So if you have multiple, um, multiple volumes writing to the same uh, to the same, to the same. Let's say LUN. We don't use LUN, but we use uh, each volume has its own separate LUN. So it's um, a dedicated LUN for each of the 
of the, the, the volumes. That goes into a write buffer, so random I.O. gets sequentialized. We push it down to that storage container object, and then we spread it out uh, across uh, the object store. We also have a read cache, and we also, of course, if you write, it's in the write buffer on one host. We also copy it out to another host, so there's a copy on the second host. So if the first host goes down, you always have a second copy. Uh, we're open source. Uh, it's licensed under the Apache 2 license. You, go, uh, you can get our code on uh, GitHub. And of course, there's always some, uh, some places where we, can add, where, we can, uh, uh, where we can use some help. So for example, now we're using um, the, the Swift protocol. Um, now we're using the S3 protocol when we store data on Swift. We would like to use the Swift protocol. Uh, so if anybody wants to take that up, we can do OVIRT integration, uh, SAF native Librados integration, for example. So there's some places where, we, where our project could use some, uh, some help. Now, um, this is not a, like a pet project or like a, a, a project we're doing after our hours. This is really business. So there's some large customers running this in production. So a real world case, for example, is one of the largest internet and mobile video service providers. Um, in China, so it's like the, the YouTube of China, is using uh, Swift of OpenV storage on top of Swift in production. And for them, it's uh, really easy. They only have one platform to maintain, Swift, as a, their object store. It scales, so they can always put more data on top. They had problems with their uh, databases. Now they don't have problems anymore because the, we, we take that block interface. Um, it also is capable of doing live migration, vMotion, things like that. So it's unified namespace, so you can move your databases from host to host, which is something they, they couldn't do when they did it on local disks. Um, it's VM-centric storage, so, uh, and of course, they get uh, really great performance. So as uh, a conclusion, uh, by default, you can't use Swift uh, to run your virtual machine storage. So you need a layer between uh, Swift and Cinder, and we can be that layer. We are an open source project, so just give us a try. And of course, if you want more information, we have a boot in uh, the marketplace. So do stop by if you want more information. OK, thank you. <laughs>